Welcome back to Fishing with T. Rabbis. Today I'm back on the water in search of some bass using my favorite technique, topwater fishing. More specifically, frog fishing, which is normally done over thick vegetation such as lily pads or weed mats. It can also be fished over submerged logs or open water, fast or slow, making frog fishing very versatile and very awesome when you get that huge blow up. Now, frogs can also be fished any time of the year, spring, summer, fall. You might have to vary your location or your technique, but you'll almost always find me throwing a frog unless it's the middle of winter. Normally don't get a frog bite in the middle of winter. Now the best tackle to use when frog fishing is a medium heavy to heavy seven foot to seven foot six with a fast action tip casting rod, which I happen to have with me today. Also, you want a high speed bait casting reel, which I have. And normally you want to use 40 to 60 pound uh, braided line. That way you can really get the fish out of those deep weeds and cover. But today I only have 14 pound fluorocarbon because I like to use this reel to do other fishing techniques such as crankbaiting. So I went with the best of both worlds, strength of fluorocarbon, but it's also a little smaller diameter. And I went with 14 pounds because that's a good middle and I very rarely break off, but it, that's all up to you. So now that you know the tackle, where and when to fish a frog, which is basically all the time, now let's get into what frog you should tie on. All right, so when it comes to choosing a frog, when you go into the store, there's about a hundred or more different options. But for me, I like to go with the cheap scum frog because I think it works just as good as the more expensive brands and it's cheaper. So if you lose it, you don't feel as bad about it and you can buy more colors and more different styles. But basically when you're frog fishing or if you're just starting frog fishing, I would say just stick with the basics. Just get a hollow body frog that just nice, just nice simple shape like this, nothing crazy. Just make sure you got nice sharp hooks on it and you can either get one or two tails on it like this and if the tails are super long cut them a little shorter kind of like this tail it will help increase your hookup rate because the fish will be less likely to miss your bait and when it comes to colors if it's overcast like it is today or you're in deep weeds you're going to want to stick with a uh, a white or a yellow It'll help the fish locate it, and that those can also be really good colors for muddy water. If it's sunny out and you're in deep cover, you want to go with a black because it imitates bluegill that the uh, fish are feeding on back in the weeds there. Or if the shad are spawning, again, go with white. And if you're in open water, I would say go with more of a green. You're less likely to scare the fish off, and it's just going to look more natural more natural. As you can see, this one's kind of white and green. Helps me be versatile from the weeds to the open water. And I've just found really good success with this color and this style of frog. But with anything in fishing, it all comes with experimentation. One frog might work better than another the next day, maybe even the next hour. So that's just the basics of what color and what style I think you should choose. Okay, so when fishing my frog over heavy cover such as this, I like to keep, well, maybe. I think we missed him, yep. I think he was smaller and he got caught in the weeds. But when fishing heavy cover like this, before I was so rudely interrupted by the fish, um, I like to keep my rod tip high and just work the frog real slow. I try to work them from open pocket of water to open pocket of water. Just leaving slack in my line and using that slack to move the... How did I miss him? What the heck? And I just kind of move the frog slowly twitching it from uh, one open pocket of water to the next because your open pockets are where you're gonna have the best hookup rates because if they hit when you're over a weedy spot, odds are the fish is gonna miss it or you're not gonna be able to hook, set the hook quite as well. 
but if you get it to that open spot and hit, you have a much better chance of catching that fish. And another thing I like to do, why I like to keep that slack in my line, is because it allows me to wait two seconds before I set the hook. Because the way these frogs are designed are these hooks, when that fish bites down, it exposes those hooks and the body twists over and then the hooks like that can then, when you wait that two seconds, the hooks are now like this, and when you set them, they're more likely to set in the fish's mouth. Where if you set immediately, they could still be like this, and odds are, you're gonna miss that fish. So I like to just work it real slow through these thick weeds, just slowly twitching along, slacking the line, high rod tip. And just, sometimes I'll even let it sit there for a while, and all of a sudden you'll just notice your bait just sitting in an open spot and a fish will just come up and smack it. Well that's the technique I found best for fishing heavy cover. Every once in a while I'll try just either reeling it in or putting my rod tip low towards the water, keeping my line tight and twitching like this like I would in open water because sometimes that works but most of the time I go with the slow technique but it doesn't hurt to try to vary it up and see if the fish are biting any better on a different technique. Got him. Whoa! Bessie! Okay, so now when I'm working a frog in more open water or across tops of logs like there are over here, I like to keep the bait moving a little more. What I like to do is I like to keep my rod tip low and I'll just twitch reel, twitch reel, twitch reel. So it'll look like a real frog move in or a wounded bait fish on the top, which is exactly what this frog bait is trying to imitate. imitate. So I just keep that rod tip low twitch reel, twitch reel, twitch reel. And then the only thing I really vary here is uh, kind of my speed. If it's windy, I'll go a little faster because normally when it's windy, the fish uh, tend to like a little faster presentation. Or on a day like today, when there's not a lot of waves, I'll just use a little bit of a slower twitch to work that bait back. Just twitch reel, twitch reel. And just wait for one to pop it. Now you still should wait the two seconds to set the hook in open water, but odds are it's a lot easier to uh, hook up with a fish and not miss it when you're in open water and there's not a bunch of weeds in the way of your bait. And even I don't struggle as much to uh, hook up with a fish in open water. But as always, you can also vary. I mean, you can let your bait sit there and work it slow across open water. I've just found most of the time I do not have a lot of success doing that. But it never hurts to try. All right, so last couple of tips here before I end this video. I would always have a backup rod like this set up with the uh, soft plastic or a jig on it because if a fish misses your frog, they're likely still hungry. And if you throw that soft plastic or jig right where that fish was, odds are they're going to bite it. And odds are you'll have a better hookup rate with this than the frog. So always have that backup rod ready to get in that fish that missed your frog or that fish that broke off on you. Second, even though frog fishing is thought of in the morning and for the evening, don't be afraid to try frog fishing midday. The results just might surprise you. And while I hope my tips for color choice and techniques and how to fish frog help you, if they don't, I'm sorry. And uh, just don't be afraid to try something else. Try a different color, try a different style, try a different technique, and let me know in the comments down below what works for you. And that's all for fishing with T. Ravis. Hope you liked the video, and I hope you find some success frog fishing, because it really is the most exciting technique.